it's hard to tell you how much this means to me. It really is. Um, what this means to me is that the, I didn't let you guys down. That's what it means. It, it means that I've been at least a little bit effective in doing what I went to Hartford to do and what you and the people in my district sent me to Hartford to do. Um, and it, it, really, it, it, it really touches me that you appreciate that and that you recognize how hard that I and others have worked to try to protect um, the, the, the civil rights of the people in this room and the people in this state. And uh, of course, I am not alone. You know, you know Rob Sampson, you know, Mike France over here. Mike France is a, is a fighter for constitutional rights like there's nobody's business. But what we are is we're just, we, we're the guy with the flag. We really are. We're the guy at the front of the pack running up the hill with the flag. So, all right, so we get our faces in the paper more often than most people. Um, because we're up there in the front, holding that flag. But it doesn't do, we're not going to be effective unless we're surrounded by other people fighting that same fight. We need the ground troops, you guys. We need the leaders, these guys, to help organize us. We need the people on the home front to do the, the sell the bonds to make sure that, that the troops are financed. We need people out there banging on doors. That's how we become effective. <clears throat> you know, just going out there and talking, you know, is not effective. You have to actually convince people. That's something that's critical and that we all need to learn about. Now, one of the things that, you know, I like to do is I learn from people in my district, I learn from you, as to what is effective and what isn't. Because obviously, there are an awful lot of people in Connecticut that don't like guns. I know it comes as a big surprise, but there are an awful lot of people who don't like guns and don't like people with guns. So what I try to do is try to figure out, well, what's the most effective way to make sure that we maintain our civil rights and our constitutional rights to possess firearms. And one of the ways that I've found, and hopefully it'll help some of you, is that you have to explain why. That's a very important thing because, you know, there, there, are, there are really two types of people who don't like firearms in the state that I've found. And most people fit within one of these two categories. One category is the, the brand that just hates anything to do with firearms and anything to do with people with firearms, no matter what. They have a, a deep ideological opposition and there's nothing you're going to say or do to sway them. And there's another, there's another group which I think greatly outnumbers that group, although it's not quite as vocal. They're just uneducated. They really are. They're, they learn about firearms from TV and from the newspapers. They see, you know, the headlines, somebody got shot yesterday. So they think, well, that's bad. So we should stop people from having firearms because that's bad. They don't understand the reason why we have constitutional rights and why we have, why we have due process rights, why we have the Second Amendment. They just don't understand. Nobody has taken the time to educate them. And if they were, if they learned, they would understand. They're pragmatic. Their, their main goal, although they, they don't give a hoot about the Constitution, most of them, as you probably know, there's a lot of people in Connecticut that don't care one way or the other about constitutional rights. But what they do care about is keeping people safe. And a lot of these people think they truly think that if you strip everybody of their firearms, everybody will be safe. 
They really think that. So one way you, to be effective in your arguments is to explain to them why that isn't true. And to be the face of somebody who they can trust. We just saw two very articulate women who made an argument why having firearms keeps people safe, keeps women safe, keeps families safe. It's one thing to have those women, or women like that, or people standing up and making a principled argument that firearms keep people safe, and our constitutional rights were put in place for a reason, and one of those reasons is to keep people safe. But it is not effective when you just have people standing there with a big NRA shirt screaming, it's my constitutional right. Understand, it is your constitutional right, but the people in this state don't care about your constitutional rights. They care about keeping people safe, regardless of your constitutional rights. And they would be willing to strip you of your constitutional rights in two seconds if they thought it was going to keep them safe. You can explain to them, and I think that's the way that we're effective. I think that's how I've been effective. That's how Mike has been effective. That's how Rob Sampson and Joe Markley have been effective. You know, people that, that you know as strong constitutional rights supporters and strong 2 way supporters. The way we're effective is we make that argument and we show those people who are not just ideologically bent against firearms that our, our Fourth Amendment rights were there for a reason. Our Fifth Amendment, our Second Amendment, these rights were given to us for a reason. And one of those reasons is because adherence to those principles keeps us safe. Now, um, Jonathan talked about the, the, the two bills that were up the legislature. And as you heard, I fought very hard against them. They were proposed by those people who are ideologically bent against firearms. They don't care about your rights. They don't want you to have a gun, period. They don't care if it makes people less safe. But the way we defeated those bills is to show those other, that other group that are pragmatic and their concern is with safety, not with ideology, that implementing those bills would have put domestic violence victims at great risk. We didn't stand there and say, it's our right, and we want our rights. We were effective by explaining to people that those rights are there for a reason, and by stripping those rights, you put women and children at great risk of grave bodily injury. And that, I think, is how we're effective. And you know, I, I, I share my experiences with you in how I think I've been effective. And I need you to share them with me. I also need for all of us, everyone in this room, everyone in every district in Connecticut, to make sure that there are more people like me, more people like Mike France, more people like Rob Sampson, Joe Markley. There's a whole group of new freshmen up there that are strong Second Amendment supporters that can stand up and articulate why the Second Amendment is important, why the Fourth Amendment is important, why the Fifth and the Fourteenth Amendments are important. We need more of those people. We need those people to become a majority. We need those people to be the chairs of the committees in the legislature. We need those people to be the Speaker of the House, and the Majority Leader in the Senate. That's how we protect our rights, and that's how we protect the women and children, and everybody in the state. And the only way we can do that is with you. I know everybody is putting a lot of money into the litigation fund, fantastic. But one of the things you also have to think about is, in two years, well, a year and a half, there's going to be an election. Election for every uh, House seat, every Senate seat is going to be up. Everybody's got to be working to make sure that the people who are elected 
are going to be strong supporters, not only of the Second Amendment, but of all constitutional rights, because they all go hand in hand. <coughs> and uh, I thank you for this very much. This means a lot to me. And, and this is going to be in my office up at the Capitol. All right. Thank you.